What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we were messing around with Batania. We ended up making some Terra Steel, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we're going to continue on with Batania and try and make more progress into that today. Yep. Uh, so off camera, I did move our Batania stuff over here, like I said I was going to do. And I have made some... Well, I guess visual changes to what we're doing here. So I decided to go with the floating uh, flowers instead of planting soil and planting the flowers onto that soil. Yeah, I think it just kind of looks better since we uh, are using the quartz everywhere that we don't just have random blocks of dirt or grass around. Anyway, so we made the floating flower. And in order to make that, if we do floating, uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of different types. But pretty much what you need to do is make one of the floating well first of all you have to make a glimmering flower so you grab one of the batania flowers you put it with two glowstone you make it glimmering then you make a pasture seed which is just tall grass in the mana pool gives you a pasture seed this when used on dirt will make a whole bunch of grass blocks by the way uh so you combine that with a piece of dirt and you get yourself a floating white flower but we don't want floating white flowers we want to get ourselves like a floating pure daisy for instance right so once you get the floating white flower, you can just combine that with any other flower. Um, yeah, so like pure daisy, for instance, you combine the floating white flower with a pure daisy and then get a floating pure daisy. So that's what I did here. We took our pure daisies and we made them all floaty. And then over here, I took our uh, endo flames and I turned them all into floaty ones. Yeah, so instead of just having eight like we had before, I did add an additional four. So they're stacked six on either side. Yep, so we have those. Those are all connected to our mana spreader, which is going into our mana pool. And with Batania, if you don't know, you can use redstone stuff with it to start and stop operations. So here I have a comparator that is looking at the mana pool. And when we get a, a output signal of 15, which means it's completely full, it outputs a redstone signal over here, which will turn off our uh, redstone torch, which pretty much stops it from dropping coal when we're full. So we're not losing coal every five minutes when one despawns and then it pops another one down. Anyway, it's completely unnecessary, but I figured I would just go ahead and do this anyway. So yeah, we're no longer losing coal when our mana pool is full. Now when we use a little bit of mana, this comparator signal will turn off, which will allow that redstone torch to turn on and it'll drop a piece of coal. So if I grab myself, I don't know, a pearl or something, and I make a mana pearl out of that. We should see this happen. Well, I thought I had this thing working before, but apparently the redstone was kind of finicky. Maybe there's some kind of like diagonal bud switch thing happening. But as you can see now, as the mana pool just filled up, the redstone signal from the comparator turned on, which turns this signal on and that comes over and powers this block which makes this redstone torch never come back on and it stops this thing from producing mana. Yeah, so I swapped out what I had here, which was a redstone block underneath and we had like a ender IO conduit passing up through this block and then like a redstone dust on top, I think, or I had the conduit going to the side of this comparator. I'm not sure which way it was, but anyway, I just made this potentiometer from Draconic Evolution, which seems to be the most effective way of doing what we're trying to do here that required us to, uh, have a draconium dust some redstone slabs and just a piece of uh, some kind of a plank anyway you can right click on this and set the output signal strength i have it set to the maximum of 15 and yeah so it's uh, inputting 15 to the side of the potentiometer or i'm sorry the comparator um it is reading 15 from the mana pool so it will send the 15 signal strength out and then if we look at this we can just see that we just have some conduit going into the bottom side of this block, which is powering it and making sure that redstone torch does not turn on. So fairly simple setup. Uh, yeah, redstone <laughs> with this kind of a thing always gets me. I always have to like get another comparator out here. It's like, what did I do wrong? And then place down some redstone torches and get some redstone dust and like figure this all out. Yeah, every single time. I don't, I don't do redstone enough to like just know all this stuff by memory. <laughs> but I thought this was working. I thought I had tested it before, but apparently I was mistaken. Anyway, so this is set up now. It has stopped. Uh, if we put in something like a diamond to make some mana diamonds, let's do like three of them. This thing should start back up again. Try it one more time. So yeah, you can see the comparator has turned off because we have gone down below 100% on the mana pool. 
and things should start working again. Um, did I? Oh, I picked up the piece of coal. I was too close to this thing. That is a problem that I will have to solve. Just need to make sure I never touch that. There it goes. Now it's working once again. Okay, it'll shut off once we get 100% full. <laughs> anyway, so now that we got that kind of figured out, uh, we had a bunch of rewards that we didn't claim from last time. We can go ahead and claim those now. I've already had those pre-selected. So we get ourselves impregnated casing. Well, eight of them. We get ourselves phantom face. Four of those. We get ourselves hay bales. Nine of those. And we get ourselves some mossy cobblestone. A full stack. Most of those things we're probably never going to use. The phantom face we might use at some point in the future. Uh, that allows you to tie one block to the phantom face a little bit further away and then interact with it from a distance. Yeah, so that can lead to some cool, like, automations without seeing any cabling or, you know, blocks interacting with the one block that you're using the phantom face on. So that could be kind of cool in the future. But anyway, what we want to do is we want to move on to getting our portal to, or I guess the Elven Gateway portal set up. Um, so we need to make ourselves Natura Pylon. So let's take a, that, take a look at that Natura Pylon. So in order to make this, we need to get ourselves a Mana Pylon, Terra Steel Nuggets, and then we need the Eye of Ender. So that is with a Mana Diamonds and Mana Steel and then some Gold Ingots. I don't think we had any Mana Steel left over, so we need to grab some Iron and throw that in there. We'll just do half a stack of that. Let's see if I can do this without stealing <laughs> the coal this time. Okay, there we go. So there's that. So there is two mana pylons. Now again, we need the Terra Steel Nuggets. So we need to take that one Terra Steel we made last time, turn it into the Nugget form, and then we need to make two Eyes of Ender. Okay, so there is two of the Nature of Pylons. Now we are left with three of these Terra Steel Nuggets, which are going to be used for creating the Elven Gateway Portal itself. But this also wants us to have two mana pools. So mana pool is made in this mod pack using rock crystal white petal blocks living rocks and a diluted mana pool which is some kind of a blue dye all right so let's try and make these guys once again so there's two diluted mana pools and then we want the white petal blocks how many of those we have it looks like we already have one white petal block in there so we are going to need a little bit... Oh, that's a light gray petal block, too. How are we doing on light gray? Well, we can make one. Yeah, I'm going to have to farm up some of those petals, which is fine. We've seen that. We can just plant those on the ground, bone meal them, and then shear them. Let me go ahead and grab those real quick, and then I will get rid of the rain, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So we should have everything together now to make ourselves two mana pools. We have two dilute mana pools. We have a bunch of the uh, living rock. The white petal blocks we have in the system, so when we craft one, they should refill. And then I had two kind of junk rock crystals in our applied energistic system. So there we go. There's our two mana pools. So we should have everything for our quest, and there it is. Awesome. So we have this. Let's go ahead and claim that guy, and we will pop it. We get apricot jelly sandwich. All right. So now that we have that stuff, uh, we need to make ourselves the elven gateway. Oh, actually, let's go back. This wants us to make the gateway core. We need eight living wood and then three glimmering living wood. So how are we doing on the living wood situation? We currently have uh, 36 living wood, so that should be enough. So the living wood, the glimmering stuff, is just a living wood plus a glowstone dust. So let's go ahead and make three of those. Glowstone. All right, so there's three of those things. And then it said we needed, like, I think it was ten of those, right? Let's go back and just double check. No, it's eight of the living wood. Okay, so there's that. So now we have to make the Elven Gateway Core. And this guy does require... Oh, so this recipe has changed. I didn't realize this at the start. So we are going to need some more Glimmering Living Wood. We're going to need some regular Living Wood. Some of our Ruined Marble. Some Resonating Gems, Star Metal. And then we are, in fact, going to have to make one more Terra Steel in order to get that fourth Terra Steel Nugget. Now, in the default Batania... You only have to make one Terra Steel, and then it costs three of the Terra Steel Nuggets for a Gateway Core, and then six of them for the two Nature of Pylons. 
Uh, so yeah, we do have to make one more Terra Steel in order to do this. So let's get that going now. Uh, so we are going to need the Mana Diamond, Mana Ingot, and a Mana Pearl. So all these things, like we did before, we can just drop them on there. I right-click whatever we want to do. I'll just drop them on there. So that will use mana from our system, and it'll just start automatically refilling itself. Uh, not very quickly, though. Those Endo Flames really aren't the best to produce mana. So uh, depending on how much more mana we're going to need in this playthrough, we might look at upgrading to a different source of mana generation. Yeah, I think uh, we have a few different options. In fact, in the quest book here, we have a few different flowers that it wants us to craft in order to complete all the quests. Um, so you got one that will use TNT, one that can eat leaves off a tree, one that will eat cake, one that eats any kind of food items, one that uh, makes mana from slimes, and then one that generates mana from lava. So we have a few different options that we can uh, go with this, so we'll have to decide what we want to do. Uh, anyway, so we have this other Terra Steel now, so we should be able to get the things that we need. So we need four Terra Steel Nuggets in order to make the Elven Gateway Core. We put that away. <clears throat> All right, so we need four ruined marble. All right, we need two star metal ingots. How do we make the ingots again? Let's just take a look. You just smelt those. Uh, aha. Do I have... Oh, I don't have that on auto craft. Okay, so in order to make that in the induction smelter, we just need to put it with sand. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. And we'll come over to our machines over here and craft up those two guys. So, in, yep, induction smelter. Star metal. That happens so quickly because of our uh, our rune here. Our, yeah, our ritual thing that we got going on. Um, anyway, so we need four more living wood. We need four more glimmering living wood. Glowstone. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, we need a lime petal block. Looks like we have plenty of lime petals that we can make that block out of. And resonating gem. We do have two of those. I think that completes everything. So the last thing we need to do is just take it over to our altar and get the ritual going. Now, we should be able to do it even though it's uh, daytime here because of all of the, yeah, all of our uh, collector crystals that we have over there. So let's just go ahead and get that thing set up. And then we need our resonating wand to give this the old click. Cool. And there we go. There's our elven gateway core. We have our three glimmering living woods. We have our living woods. We have our mana pools and our nature pylons. So that does complete the quest. Okay, we'll grab this loot chest, we'll claim it, and what are we going to end up with? We get ourselves a cow in a jar! Well, that's not exactly something that we need at the moment, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to uh, stick it down here with our other one that we already have, right? So let's grab this guy, and, I don't know, I guess we can just stick it right there. Now slowly fill with milk like this one is doing. Mm hmm Okay, very good. So we have everything that we need now in order to make the Elven Gateway Portal. Now, the thing is, it does require mana to start this thing up, and we only have a little bit of mana over here. Uh, we can take some of the mana from that pool and start up the portal, and I believe this, does not gen or this doesn't use mana all the time anymore. It used to. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's a thing anymore. I'm trying to figure out where I want to set this. Maybe right here here that should be okay so the gateway core uh we need two living wood then we need a living wood here plus glimmering living wood living wood living wood that one there and the two extra glimmering go right like that uh we do need the mana pools in front of this thing i don't think they have to be in any specific place anymore and then we need the nature pylons like that Okay, so that should be all we need in order to start this thing up, other than the mana in our mana pools. So, do we have a quest for making a mana tablet? We do. So, mana tablet is something you can throw into a mana pool, and it will fill up the mana, and then you can stick it onto another pool and drain it. So, that's one good way of moving mana around. So, we will make ourselves one of these. 
and we will put it over here and steal some of the mana from this pool. Now, the pools can be set to either accept or send mana. Looking for my Wand of the Forest. I don't see it in here. Wand of the Forest. So currently, this is set to take mana and put it onto the mana tablet. So let's, whoop, let's cue that on here. So we should be draining mana out of the mana pool. We can kind of see that happen by right clicking on here or just physically looking at the level of the mana. Uh, I can't remember how much one of those tablets hold. I think it might be like half a mana pool. But anyway, we want to go ahead and fill that up as much as possible. I think we should be able to fill it and still have mana left in this thing. Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> Is it done yet? It doesn't look like it's draining anymore. Yeah, it looks like it's done. All right, so let's grab that guy. Whoop. Okay, we're fine. I'll put the coal back in here. All right, so we have a mana tablet that is completely filled. Now these mana pools are set to mana tablet into the pool. I wonder why that one was set differently. I don't remember ever clicking that to set it the other way. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, if we queue that on here, we should start draining mana out of the tablet into the pool. I think we'll bring it up to that first pixel right like that. And then we'll do the same thing on this one over here and just let that drain all the way. Okay, so now if we right click on to here, we should start that up and we should see that drop. Yeah, okay, so that's all the mana that it uses. Let's grab this one and put it over into this guy. Just to kind of even this out a little bit. Cool. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying before, in the past, the portal would just use mana passively all the time that you had it open. It would use a lot of mana to start it up and then it always just use a little bit of mana. I think they have changed it now so it doesn't use mana just being a portal only uses mana when you are converting stuff. So we can leave this thing running all the time and that's not a big deal. Um, I did see a bunch of quests get complete. Yeah, we had a band of mana, so we will do that one. We had the mana tablet, let's do this one. And we had alchemy catalyst, which we, we did make a while ago. So we'll claim those three. Um, so we get ourselves ender chest. That's kind of cool. Uh, ice pillar, so that's 64 blocks of chiseled ice and mending moss. We're probably never going to use that, but we'll just put those things away anyway. Cool. So now that we have the portal, the elven portal, we can start looking at making this more advanced stuff like elementium. Now, in the past, I think that's two mana steel, but there could be change in this one. Let's take a look on what it costs in this pack. It is, yeah, two mana steel. Okay, so mana steel. We're going to want to make probably a few of those. We'll make five ingots worth, so I'll drop ten mana steel into the portal. And it just shoots out five. Okay, so now we have Elementium ingots made. Cool. Uh, next thing, it wants us to make an Elven Mana Spreader. Mana Spreader. So that is an upgrade version of our base Mana Spreader, which goes in the recipe. Stardust, some dream wood, and then it requires Elementium pipe piece. So that's a Tinker's Construct item. I don't know if I've ever done this before. So anyway, it does require four ingots in order to craft that. And then we have to have the cast to do that. So we can make, oh, I don't know. I guess we can just make a pipe piece out of cobblestone, cast that out, and then uh, melt down. I guess we're going to need four more of these. Yeah, I'm most likely going to want to craft uh, two of these mana spreaders. One for taking the mana from our flowers into the mana pool, and then the other one from the mana pool into our runic altar. So we'll just ignore that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we want to come over here. We want to make a pipe piece. So let's see, we want the stencil table and then pipe piece is probably down here. This is that what this is a pipe piece pattern. Okay. So we have that. Then we will come over here and do this and make a stone pipe piece. All right. So then we want, uh, do we have aluminum brass? We do have aluminum brass. So we'll do one ingot of that, pour it onto this guy. So we'll do that, place this guy over here, like so. Gotta wait for that to melt down, then we can pour that into our smart output, which will make the mold. And then we just need to start melting down our elementium. So let me go ahead and make three more ingots and make these pieces. We'll look at making these elven mana spreaders.
All right, so we made ourselves our other Elementium pipe piece. We have both of these now. And the next thing that we need to do is make some dream wood. Yep, that's upgraded version of our living wood. Each of these requires six of them. Okay. And yeah, to make that, it's just an elven trade. You put in one living wood, you get out one dream wood. So we're going to need 12 of those. So here's 12 living wood. Whoop, my camera got spun around somehow. I don't know how that works. Uh, all right, so we have that. So we needed two of the star metal. And we should be pretty much ready to go here. Uh, let's grab an axe. That should work just fine. I'll break this guy. Oh, that got onto the thing. I was like, what's going on with that? Right click, shift right click. There we go. So here's one of these. So we should be able to upgrade that guy right away. So there's an elven mana spreader. That should complete the quest, I think. We just needed one. Yes. All right, so we can place this guy here. Now, actually, what I should have done is taken the mana spreader and pointed it back at the mana pool. I just wasted the internal buffer of mana, but I guess it's not a whole lot for the bottom tier one of those. And then again, we are going to want to put our composite lens back on this thing. And then we'll do a uh, shift right click, shift right click, and make sure it points right at that guy. The other thing we need to do is do the same thing for this one up here. So I can just right shift right. There's a way you can get that off there. Do you do it with an empty hand? Okay, you just right click with an empty hand to get that off. Um, and we will take this one down. We probably lost a little bit of mana in the process of doing that, but it's really not a big deal. These endo flames don't produce that much at a time. So we'll just go ahead and make this guy do this. Shift right click, shift right click. And I think all these things are still pointing to that same location. Looks like we don't have to change anything here, huh? You see the outline when I hover over each one of these showing that it's pointing at this mana spreader. Okay, and then the only other thing we have to do is just place that back on there. Yep, and everything is set up exactly the way it was before. Cool. So we have upgraded all of our mana spreaders. Awesome. Uh, so now we have these two quests complete. So let's do that one and this one. We'll claim both of those rewards and we get ourselves a farmer. I don't know if we got a farmer before. It looks like we have not. And then we get ourselves a block of Electrum. Okay. So the farmer is an actually additions quest item that we just got for free. So that's awesome. Uh, so next step, Gaia Pylons. This is going to get us into the Guardian of Gaia fight. So the Gaia Pylons, we need four of those. So the Gaia Pylon is made with Mana Dust, Pixie Dust, and then more of these mana pylons. Okay, so mana dust is something that we can craft with mana diamonds for those uh, erothium dust, cryothium dust, petrothium dust, and pyrothium dust, plus mana powder. Okay, mana powder is just gunpowder, redstone, or glowstone. Actually, it looks like there's a few other recipes that you can do to get it. Um, I'm not sure how much of this stuff we have. Let's take a look. So if I wanted to craft this, okay, so we are now missing petrothium dust. That requires basalt powder, which we don't have any of. And you can craft this stuff directly by infusing obsidian to obsidian with some essence of knowledge, essence, or liquid XP, any one of those. So we have plenty of that stuff around. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. We'll make the basalt powder. We'll... Just go ahead and craft everything that we need for this stuff. The erothium is pretty much the same thing, blitz powder, but you can craft that by putting liquid XP onto niter, saltpeter, nitrate dust, whatever. I think uh, all of these have a similar recipe. Blizz powder is made by liquid XP onto snowballs. And pyrothium, blaze powder, I don't think it has a recipe. Oh, it does, sulfur plus essence. But we can farm a blaze just as easy. Anyway, let me go ahead and create this stuff all crafted up, and we'll be right back, guys. So we're looking at trying to make this mana powder, mana dust. Turns out we already had enough in the system. We must have gotten this from a reward at some point in the, in the past. But anyway, to make that stuff, we did need these different thermal foundation dusts, right? So I went ahead and I took the liberty to set up auto crafting for all of these different ones, and we saw, like... In order to make cryothium, we needed blizz powder, redstone, plus snowball. But we have plenty of snowballs in the system, like over 700 of them, and we have a lot of redstone. But it was this powder that was the problem. We saw that we can do a fluid transposer, so a couple snowballs, plus some liquid XP, 
gets us a blizz powder, right? So I set up a fluid transposer over here that is full of liquid XP. And then I set up an experience pylon here that's completely full since we have all sorts of XP available from our mob farm. Um, so yeah, I used a solidified XP on myself and then I put it all into here until this thing was full. Uh, so we have that and then we have a conduit that's extracting out of here through a conduit facade into here. So this is going to stay always full with the 10 buckets until this runs out. We don't have a way to automatically fill it. Not a big deal. If we run out, we'll figure it out in the future. I don't know like how important this even is. But anyway, uh, behind here we have our recipes. So we have two snowballs equal one blizz powder. Uh, two sulfur equals a blaze powder. One pulverized obsidian equals one basals. Wait, is that right? One pulverized obsidian. Uh, basals? Nope, that recipe is wrong. I don't know how that happened. Uh, let's try and fix that then. Yeah, one basalt powder should be two pulverized obsidian. How did that happen? I was doing these recipes. Yep, that is definitely wrong. Uh, so this, this, good thing we double checked it too, huh? So click that. Oh, I'm not sure how that turned to a one, but it did. So we have that recipe available now uh, over here. Okay, and then the two niter for one blizz powder. Now, niter was the one thing that we didn't have a lot of. Um, if we look at niter, we can see there's a bunch of different ways to craft it. Like, this would probably be the most ideal way, but we haven't started into mag magical agriculture or mystical agriculture at all. Uh, we can pulverize sandstone and get a 40% chance at it. I've done this in the past, and that, I mean, it works, but I don't really want to do it that way if there's a better way. It turns out... Uh, crusher, you can take gunpowder and get one niter, or in the manufacturer, you can take one sandstone and get two niter. So this is what we're doing. So we have a manufactory set up that is doing that recipe uh, over here. Yeah, this manufactory actually does another recipe. I can't see the thing since that's a keyboard facade manufactory. Uh, so that's also making our bioplastic and taking one oak plank and turning it into four sticks for us. Yeah, that replaced the carpenter or whatever the the wood thing from mechanism was whichever machine we had there before which was really slow manufacturing is just much faster so i replaced that particular block um so anyway we have the ability to make all of this stuff now the only thing we don't auto craft is any of the batania stuff and again i don't know how important it is to auto craft this i've never played this pack before so i don't want to just set up all these automations for like batania if we're only going to have to make this like two or three times right it just doesn't make a lot of sense uh, but anyway, we should be able to craft all of this stuff now as long as we have the mana diamonds and the mana powder. And that's the important thing, I feel like. But like I said before, we did have mana dust in here from some kind of reward, I assume, previously. So everything I just set up like wasn't necessary for right this second. But it is going to be nice for the future, I am sure. So anyway, we're trying to make the Gaia pylon. So we needed to get... Uh, four elementiums and then eight of this mana dust and then the pixie dust is just um, Oh, I didn't do enough of those that is mana pearls put through the elven gateway portal over here Just the same way as we've done before uh, This is another thing we can automate but like I said, I'm not sure if I, we need to automate it. So I have not uh, So there is those so I think we should be able I need one more diamond we should be able to craft all of this stuff. Where are my diamonds? They're at the top. Okay. Did I run out of coal? Oh, we ran out of coal. That's another thing we probably should be able to do is get applied energistics over here to get this thing completely full. And when that runs out, there is no way for it to like start again. So I just have to throw a piece of coal on there and that should get it going. There we go. All right. So we'll generate mana going forward. Uh, so this thing, just drop that right into there Where, oh that went, oh no it went into my thing <laughs> uh i don't have a good way of getting that out of there oh no i'm placing all the wrong things so we have 55 diamonds in here apparently let's try this again try again try again again there we go got it let's get rid of this block okay so now we have our mana diamond finally so there's that there's our second mana pylon those can go in there and we're trying to make the gaia pylons so there is that. Oh, yeah, and then I need uh, mana steel. Oop, we are going to need one more of that. So iron. Actually, let's just make a few of those so I don't have to just make them every now and then. We can just have a few made up in bulk here. 
All right, we'll fix the cool thing here in a second. Get that on there. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so I need one more. What did I need here? We are trying to make. What are we? What are we doing here? Yeah, we need two more of the elementium. So we need four of this into the portal. Okay, so there's that, that, and there is our second Gaia pylon. Actually, am I? We need four of those. All right, so there we go. There's the four Gaia pylons. So now we should get the quest complete for that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I did end up making a bunch more of the mana diamonds. We did get a chance to use our recipe for making the mana dust, and that works pretty good. So again, if I want to make like eight more of that stuff, we just need to have the mana diamonds in there. Uh, it was able to craft all the things it needed to craft through that fluid transposer, so it was not a waste of time for us doing that. We did actually need to use it. So Gaia Pylons that does complete this quest. We'll take the bottom loot chest, just claim that right now, and we get ourselves a red velvet, eight red velvet cakes. We'll just put those away. Okay, so moving on from this, the next thing that it wants us to do is to do the Gaia Spirit. So in order for us to do this, we need to get ourselves a Terra Steel. Yeah, we need one Terra Steel, right-clicked onto a beacon that's in a multi-block structure along with these Gaia Pylons in order to spawn the Guardian of Gaia. So, we need half a mana pool of mana. We don't have half a mana pool full of mana, so it might be in our best interest here to look at a way to generate mana faster. So I just checked the time on the episode, and yeah, we are at that time. Unfortunately, we won't be able to look at making more mana today. Uh, we'll have to wait till next time. But yeah, that's definitely a thing that we're going to have to do. I was kind of looking to see. Uh, we do need the Gaia Spirit, uh, these things, in order to make the Gaia Spirit ingot, right? Uh, plus some other stuff. But we need these Gaia Spirit ingots in order to do the Tier 2 uh, Batania boss. And also, these are used in a few other recipes here. Uh, with some mana tablets that are full apparently and a bunch of other stuff that we can't quite do yet So it seems like it might be in our best interest to be able to generate mana a little bit faster I think that's probably something we're gonna have to do and also uh, these are used in the uh, Creative mana pool which we're probably gonna be making at some point in the future. I would imagine mm Hmm, but anyway guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.